We all love digging around in the past on a metaphorical level, from rifling through old family photos to digging through the encyclopedias of ancient stories. Spending a little time exploring the past can be a delight. But archaeologists take it to a different level because they are literally digging up the past, and they find things that are so much more shocking than anything you could ever find in a library or textbook. These are the 20 greatest archaeological discoveries ever made. Number 20. The Lost City of Tania Given that big intro, you probably would think that I'd start this list with something big and boisterous. Perhaps add a little bit of impending doom. Something like, what atheists just discovered in Saudi Arabia terrifies the whole world. How was that? Was that good for you? It was good for me. Did it make you wonder what I'm even talking about? I wonder that same thing all the time. Sadly, I'm not starting off in Saudi Arabia, I'm actually going to Greece. You see, something that often happened in the ancient world was that cities were important for one reason or another. Often they were consumed by nature itself, because Mother Nature doesn't always play nice. But another reason that ancient cities are lost is because they're abandoned by their people and nature literally swallows them up. In Greece, one such city that met this fate was the lost city of Tinea. The city had long been known about by modern-day Greeks due to the stories that surrounded it, but no one knew where it was until 2019 when it was finally discovered. The reason that no one could find it was because it was buried beneath fields that had overtaken it. According to myth, the city was founded by the Trojans sometime around 1100 BC and then built by prisoners of war. They chose this place because it was on a road in a strategic position between two large settlements, and it was further said to have housed certain Greek figures and was one of the most important cities in the region. And yet, it vanished, and no one knew why or how. The woman who made the impressive discovery had been hunting for the city for decades and was the one who also gave the reason for its abandonment. Apparently, the wealth of its people started to diminish over time, so they fled to other areas, which included to the nearby hills where certain buildings can still be found. And with that, another legend had been found and its secrets revealed, more or less at least. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. What atheists just discovered in Saudi Arabia terrifies the whole world. Because working as scientists, these atheists have discovered potential evidence that once upon a time, many moons ago, Saudi Arabia may have been a seriously snowy country. Now we know that weather can change with time, but we had no idea it could change quite this much. They've even unearthed old paintings that portray the region as a cold one, as well as alternate translations of the Bible referring to this place as being severely snowy. Number 19. Prehistoric Footprints Now we'll change tracks and go to talk about something truly fascinating, that being footprints. Yeah, I know footprints don't sound fascinating at first, but you'll have to roll with me on this one. In Africa back in 2020, in Tanzania, a large group of fossilized footprints were discovered. And that's important because these footprints were thousands of years old, meaning that they had to survive a whole lot of things, which included the harsh conditions in Africa, just to survive, and they did. With over 400 footprints, it is the largest human fossil footprint site ever discovered in Africa. Researchers dated the footprints to between 19,000 and 5,760 years ago. That's quite the range right there, but it's not exactly something that they have an easy way to trace. Even by the researcher's own admission, it's very rare to find fossilized human footprints. It's more common to find things like tools, ancient pottery, or even bones of the deceased. However, what they were able to determine was what kind of group it was and what they were doing. Scientists believe that this was a group that was mostly comprised of women that were walking alongside of men. They appeared to have been traveling somewhere, but obviously it's impossible to know exactly where. However, it is possible that they were foraging for something and that the men were there to protect them. So how did these footprints survive for so long? Well, that would be the kind of terrain that the people walked through to make them. They were walking through wet ash, 
that was tied to a volcanic mud flow, and as a result, when it hardened up, it basically became concrete, and that's one way to ensure your survival. Again, not the most exciting of discoveries, but everything that can give a clue to the past is a meaningful archaeological discovery in the end. Number 18. The Madaba Map Who doesn't love a good map? I mean, after all, maps are useful, including for, well, getting places or being guided to certain spots of interest. This particular map, though, could be found in the Byzantine Church of St. George in Madaba, Jordan. The Madaban map was literally on the floor within a mosaic, and it was an incredible depiction of the Holy Land, which included Jerusalem. The map may partially have served to facilitate pilgrims' orientation in the Holy Land. All landscape units are labeled with explanations in Greek, which was a universal language of the time, thanks to Alexander the Great. Sadly, pieces of that mosaic were lost or even destroyed during various points of history, and that included two fires. It wasn't uncovered again until the 1880s, and even then it wasn't heavily researched until over a decade later. Given the incredible detail that was placed into the Madaba map, it must have been a true sight to behold when it was completed, and it's a pity that we'll never get to see it in its full glory. Number 17. The Charred Scrolls of Herculaneum When I say Mount Vesuvius, you would probably think about the legendary eruption that it caused and how it buried the city of Pompeii so thoroughly that it would not be uncovered until a long, long time afterwards. But what many people tend to forget, or are not simply taught, is that two cities were buried that day, with the second one being Herculaneum. Now, thankfully, it too would be rediscovered, and one of the things that was found within that buried city was the Villa of Papyri. What's that? Well, it was an ancient library that had over 1,800 scrolls inside of it. The twist is that because of the intense heat that the city was under, due to that volcanic eruption, the scrolls were charred, which is bad, but it also actually preserved them so that they could be found in the 18th century. A small difference is between that. And thanks to the phenomenon, which is called refraction, we can see the... Since their discovery more than 250 years ago, scholars have attempted to unroll and translate the fragile scrolls, many of which contain Greek texts on Epicurean philosophy, particularly some written by the philosopher Philodemus. While it's difficult to look at all the scrolls due to their state, new techniques are being developed to help open the way for full translations. And one could only imagine all that's written upon these scrolls. Hopefully one day, we will have the answer to all of our questions. Number 16. The Palace at Gnosis there are a lot of civilizations that have been rediscovered in the modern day and have proven certain mythological tales true to a certain extent. For example, if you head to what is now Greece, you'll be able to see the palace at Knossos, which can be found within Crete. The reason that this place is important was that when it was discovered, it proved that the Minoan civilization existed. The Minoans were the earliest Aegean civilization, and its place in mythology ties to the legendary labyrinth of the Minotaur and King Minos. It took a while to get everything unearthed, but by 1903, the palace in its entirety had been dug up, and then excavations began on other areas to flesh out the civilization even more. They even found that beneath the palace was another palace from an earlier time. All of this would not have been possible to know unless someone followed the clues that history had laid out for them and then proceeded to dig up the truth. It is good to know that some people back then were not afraid to put their backs into it and get the work done. Number 15. The Serapium of Alexandria Temples were a big deal in the ancient world. No matter what civilization you went to, there were going to be temples to the gods and they were as massive and extravagant as the gods they worshipped. The Serapium of Alexandria is one such example of that, and it's an example of a place being in two worlds. Because, as many of you likely know, Alexandria is in Egypt, but the temple is of Greek origin. That's because it was in the Greek quarter of the city. The Serapium was a popular destination for pilgrims and tourists from all over the world, and was known for its healing powers, and many people came to the temple to seek cures for their ailments. The temple was also known for its fertility rites, and many couples came to the temple to pray for children. That alone should show you the power of the temples during the time. For many, it was their way to get what they wanted 
while also ensuring a better life for themselves. Number 14. Otzi the Iceman Finding a body in the archaeology sense is always a good thing, as it can help reveal details about the person's life, the period of history they lived in, and so on. But what has surprised many people over the years is how many preserved humans they've found in places like mountains. Places where the cold literally freezes them, so they can't wither like a standard body. Such would be the fate of Otzi the Iceman. Otzi, as he was later called, was a man who apparently lived between 3350 and 3105 BC, he was found up in the Alps between Austria and Italy, and he's been a subject of much fascination ever since. That's mainly because people have wondered what actually led to him being frozen on that mountain. Many think that he was murdered and then left up there to wither. Despite him being found in 1991, people are still learning things about him even to this day. Number 13. Sutton Hoo now you've all heard of certain cultures doing a burial at sea, where they either commit the body to the deep or put a body in a ship and then let it go off into the vastness of the ocean where the gods may take them. In 1939, Basil Brown was doing some light digging when he found a full-on burial ship that was complete with a whole lot of treasure inside. Talk about making a lucky find. The name of the ship was Sutton Hu, and from the moment that it was discovered, people wanted to know what it was that they were witnessing. Now obviously, someone important was meant to be lost within that ship, and yet it was not clear as to who. Sadly though, the body was gone by the time the ship had been rediscovered, but based on evidence that was found, it's believed to have been the burial chamber for a king or an equally high member of society. Number 12. King Tut's Tomb there are very few archaeology sites that are as important as King Tut's tomb, because the tomb almost single-handedly started up a frenzy over Egyptian history and archaeology. King Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered in 1922 by excavators who were led by Howard Carter, and once they discovered it, the whole world wanted to know some more. The media attention alone made it one of the most publicized archaeological sites ever, and that would lead to a whole lot of things happening, which included the mention of King Tut's curse shiny pillars and statues associated with the tomb of a governor. To be clear, yes, some of the people who found the tomb did die soon afterwards due to other curious circumstances, but it was later admitted by the team themselves that they had made up the entire curse in order to ward off any grave robbers who might have tried to steal treasures from the tomb. The other irony of this tomb is that despite its finding, there are plenty of mysteries about King Tut, his reign, his history, his death, and more that all remain unanswered. For example, why was he never properly buried if he was such a beloved pharaoh? There are also some mysteries about who his parents truly were and whether or not they had a forbidden relationship. Regardless, this tomb is a vital piece of archaeological history and it'll be treasured for many years to come. Number 11. The Antikythera Mechanism now let's go back to another ship, but this time it's one that would be found off the coast of Greece, and had a device that to this day makes people wonder how the Greeks even came up with it. The Antikythera mechanism was a kind of analog computer, one where the sailors would input certain data, like the data of their location, and be able to track the position of the moon and stars, and know when things like eclipses were going to occur, and so on. So what exactly is the problem here? Well, while the Greeks were advanced, they shouldn't have been this advanced. There were gears and other intricate devices all within the mechanism that shouldn't have been possible in that period of history, and yet here we are staring at it right now. We we'll leave it to the Greeks to make something like a computer before anyone even thought of what a computer could even be. Number 10. The Newly Found Nazca Lines the Nazca Lines on their own are one of the most important archaeological discoveries in history. Why? Well, that's because they're a mysterious construct of glyphs, many kilometers long and wide, and in great number. The Nazca people are just as mysterious, because it's unclear how they were able to create such glyphs without advanced technology and guidance. But the reason that I'm bringing it up now is that last December, we found even more of them. Archaeologists discovered 168 geoglyphs near the arid Nazca plain in southern Peru. Some of the things that these new glyphs depicted were things like cats, birds, and even humans 
human beings. That means that with this new collection, there are over a thousand individual geoglyphs that have been made by the Nazca people, and we still have no idea why they were made in the first place. People believe it may have been tied to the gods that they worshipped, but that can't be proven either, very sadly. Number 9. The Ruins at Moenadero the archaeological ruins at Moenadero are the best preserved urban settlement in South Asia that dates back to the beginning of the 3rd millennium BC. That alone would be impressive, but as many have noted, what was just as impressive was the influence this settlement had on other parts of society. It was part of the Indus civilization, which was one of the three best civilizations of that period in time, in this case 2500 to 1500 BC. One thing that separated it from other settlements was the distinctive planning of its various elements and buildings. You could find baths and priest areas, a drainage system, and more. And arguably, the most impressive thing of all was that it was made entirely out of unbaked bricks. Today, the site is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and many are still seeking to learn everything that it holds within. Number 8. Lalabella Churches of Ethiopia High in the mountains of northern Ethiopia, Lalabella is one of the most important pilgrimage places of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Pilgrimages are a very popular thing in various religions, and this one is an excellent example of that, as they had 11 medieval churches that were literally built into rock faces. Specifically, they were carved out of volcanic rock, which is impressive in its own right. One of the reasons that these churches are so intriguing is not just because of their composition, but because they're hard to date in terms of their origins. While there was an origin date at one time, some new research would suggest that it was centuries older than that, possibly even to the 7th or 8th centuries. And all of these churches were apparently made within the span of 25 years. Number 7. Machu Picchu as has been already established, there are many mythical and historically important cities and places that are still being discovered even today, but one of the ones that continues to baffle the world and make everyone wonder more about ancient times is Machu Picchu in Peru. This all-time great find is the Lost City of the Incas, and it stands 2,430 meters above sea level. One of the reasons why it's so special, even by archaeological terms, is that it's a city that was incredibly advanced for its time. The site's finely crafted stonework, terraced fields, and sophisticated irrigation system bear witness to the Incan civilization's architectural, agricultural, and engineering prowess. Moreover, if you look at how the city was constructed, it was not only hobbled together, it was comprised of zones by which you would either live or do certain kinds of work. However, one of the biggest mysteries of Machu Picchu is simply some of the more fine details that were not recorded. The Incan people had no written language, so things that happened within the city and who ruled over it or lived in it is not really on record. In fact, after it was abandoned by the Incan Empire, people who lived nearby just grew used to it and didn't seek to do anything with it. It was not until 1911 when American archaeologist Hiram Bingham stumbled upon the site thanks to locals' advice, and that's when everything changed. The place is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, meaning that it will be protected, which is good, because there are plenty of people who still want to study what happened in this place. Number 6. The Cave of Altamira Caves have been a godsend for many archaeologists because some of them have held everything from bones to ancient tools to expansive wall murals depicting various parts of history. The Cave of Altamira is in that last category, as there are certain artistic murals here that date back to between 35,000 to 11,000 BC. Humanity was apparently very artistic even back then. This cave system is within northern Spain, and the expansiveness of the murals goes well into the cave itself. which is actually what helped with its preservation. Now, moreover, they've been studied extensively to the point where no expert thinks that they're fake, which is a rare thing indeed, and one can only picture what it must have been like for these early humans to go into these caves and make such artistic wonders. Number 5. The Terracotta Army 
The tombs of fallen leaders are always a priority for archaeologists, as they not only can learn about the burial ceremonies of an ancient culture, but they can learn more about the people who were buried within the tombs themselves. This is the tomb of the first emperor of China, and he was the one who unified the warring factions into one nation that still stands today. So, needless to say, he was going to have a very nice tomb when he died. And surely enough, he was, and when the tomb was consumed by the ground, it would not be until 1974 that it was rediscovered and found by some farmers who had discovered some clay fragments in the ground and wondered where exactly they came from. A large-scale project was soon undertaken, and the tomb of the emperor was discovered, alongside with 8,000 or more extra residents. That's because within that tomb was the legendary Terracotta Army, a massive collection of statues over 8,000 strong that were meant to protect the emperor in the afterlife. And what makes them so special, aside from their purpose, is that each one of them was made to be special. If you think about the time and effort that it would take to do this, not only did they have to look the part, they had to last, and they did it for the most part. The soldiers even had 40,000 or more weapons that were all well-preserved, partially because they were made out of bronze. There are a few twists that are left in the tale. The first is that while the emperor was an important person, he was also one that was obsessed with immortality, and that would lead to his death as he was fond of drinking mercury. That's partially why the army was built, because he feared what may happen to him in the afterlife, and so he had to have an army to come with him. The second irony is that despite the tomb being found, we have not yet opened it partially because of government approval, and partially because it's been so perfectly sealed that nobody knows what's going to happen if they actually go in. Number 4. Tikal Of all the ancient civilizations that have mysteriously vanished, the Mayans are the ones who left the biggest question marks. They were a massive civilization that seemingly went up in a cloud of smoke, leaving all of their impressive cities behind to be discovered and researched later. One such place was Tikal. Tikal is in the modern-day Guatemala and has been extensively studied since at least the 1950s and is now part of a national park in the country. It's believed to have been a major cultural area for the Mayan Empire, and it stands as one of the most studied archaeological sites in the world today. It's so vast, in fact, that there may be thousands of other archaeological sites that are just waiting to be uncovered. And you can bet that people are going to want to find each and every one of them. Number 3. Higher Benacal Megaliths are a common find from certain ancient civilizations, and in India, at the site known as Higher Benacal, you'll find many of them to be studied. But how many are there? Well, only about 400 monuments, I'll be told. That makes it the biggest site of its kind in India. The complex was built more than 2,000 years ago, between 800 and 200 BC, and that was during the Indian Iron Age, which lasted for more than a thousand years. Despite the place being rediscovered back in 1835, it was not properly looked at until about a hundred years later, and its findings were published until 20 years after that. Only in recent years have people finally begun to fully explore and document what was going on there. So yeah, even the archaeologists can be lazy, apparently. Number 2. Gobekli Tepe as I said in the intro, you just never know what you're going to find in an archaeology site until you begin digging, and Gobekli Tepe is an excellent example of that concept. Its discovery was made in the 1960s, and as people dug it up, they realized that they were looking at something much more old than they were anticipating. Some believe that it is the world's first temple, and that it's 6,000 years older than Stonehenge, and that is quite old. Gobekli Tepe itself is in Turkey, and the reason that many were so stunned by its apparent age is that it would mean that it was constructed during a time when humanity were not the best of builders. Now, I know it's odd to think that given the civilizations that were built in ancient times, but those were not made one day on a random whim. This was a process to get the level of skill that you see in ancient constructs. Humanity, at this period of time, should not have been able to make anything like Gobekli Tepe, and yet they somehow did. For context, I'm talking about it being built between 9500 and 8000 BC. By all accounts, that was the Neolithic age when they didn't even know how to make pottery. 
Further adding to the wonder and mystery is that there are megaliths within the site that are adorned with certain imagery of people, animals, clothing, and more. Some archaeologists even believe that this site could be an example of one of the oldest settlements in the world. So yeah, that makes it a pretty special thing indeed. Number 1. Hal Safliani Hypogeum there are a lot of structures that archaeologists look for depending on the civilization, and a necropolis is one such place. It's here that many bodies are buried to honor them and keep them close to others of their kin or kind. But what makes this place so special is it's Europe's only known Neolithic necropolis. That's important because it was found under the island of Malta within the Mediterranean, and it lies a few miles off the island's capital. It's a massive underground expansive containing many packages. As always, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. You can check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.